Hello, Assalamu alaikum everyone. A wonderful day all of you. Welcome to our institution of Global Professional Free International Webinar. Thank you all for joining with us in this wonderful afternoon, my lovely audience. Today I am your host for this session. I am Kamdul, coordinator of IGP from Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member. I feel honored to host this webinar and it's my delight to welcome you all to our institution of global professional platform. Thank you again all for joining us today in this afternoon and it's my humble request to you that you stay stay with us till then and don't forget to tag share and mention your friends so let's together and learn together today we have a speaker from philippines before we are going to live it's my request to you that you share this webinar to your newspeak and different educational groups and also mention your friends it's my humble request today our speaker name is marlon r alfonso mba fit he is a teacher two teaching practical research one two and immersion investigation and inquiries he is also teaching physical education and health cameron search national high school Let's welcome our speaker to the screen. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Welcome to the show, sir. Sir, give a short description about yourself, then you can start your presentation. Okay. Can you start, can you start now? now? Yes, sir, you can start now. Okay, so good, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hello, hello. Yes, sir, I hear you. Thank you so much. Okay, my name is Marlon Alfonso. Um, I'm your speaker for practical research and immersion. And it's my pleasure to be one of your speakers for today's session. And I would like to thank the committee of this IGP for inviting me to be the speakers for today's session. Okay, okay. So now I'm so going now to I'm talk about, 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 about. Thank you. 
Sir, may apology to my connection and also, especially the background. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I will set uh, 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 my presentation. My apology for the bad background voice. Hello, sir. Sir, you entered from two devices. Just left one. Okay, okay thank okay, you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Mm -hmm. Alright, me Heart apology me for the. the uh, bad, background bad background noise. noise. I, believe, I sir, believe, sir, there is an echo. An echo. I don't know, I don't where, know where it, it came, came from. Okay, to okay, begin, begin with, with my, my presentation, presentation regarding, regarding practical, practical research and immersion, uh, let us introduce what is practical research. 
as we all know that practical research is more on qualitative research method that usually this is the foundation of all the researchers and especially in our end senior high school department as a research teacher for this particular subject we always remind our students to have a basic knowledge on how to create a research title qualitative quantitative or a mixed method of research method um, i'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar with this type of research method but this is just a review and additional information so that all of us refresh and aware of the new trends and what are the rules and regulations with regard to this particular method. Okay, number one objectives, we're going to differentiate the general classification of research based on purpose. Number two, we are going to describe characteristics, strengths, weaknesses, and kinds of qualitative research. And number three is illustrate the importance of qualitative research across fields. So in our end, in our department, since I am a senior high school teacher here in our institution, we always follow the rules and regulations that creating a research title would be based on their strengths or track. Let's say we have this academic track, arts and design track, sports track, uh, technical vocational livelihood. So their research title would be based on their strength or track so that they would not have this difficulty with regard to creating a research title and be able them to defend their title easily because this is their expertise. Let's come to the type of research. So number one, according to objectives, we have this pure versus applied research. So what is the difference between the two? and how pure and applied research um, basically ex executing by the senior high school teachers or let's say senior high school students based on their tracks. Number two, exploratory versus explanatory. So what is the difference between the two? how the teachers execute this uh, type of research to their students. Number three is quantitative versus qualitative research. So this is the most uh, usually familiar all of us, not just our students, but also the researchers. So meaning to say that they have options what types of research they would be go through uh, for a certain problem or issues next one let us differentiate what is applied research to a basic research so applied research this is aims at the practical application of scientific approaches to find solutions Basic research, the aims at expanding the knowledge on the existing research topics. So basically, senior high school students, we allow them to start from the basic research. But that is depends on the type of strengths because STEM, track usually we allow them to use research or do research that is applied that is experimental when we said basic research this is pure research so this is more on theory unlike applied research this is more on practical 
So students would have this experiment and make some tests about a certain problem or issues. Applied research would focus on testing the theories. Unlike basic research, it would focus on stating and generating theories. So meaning to say what theories would says about this issues. Next one is the solution is limited to a problem. And basic research, the solution can be generalized. Exactly. Applied research need an exact solution. Basic research, this is applicable to all. If the problem is similar or let's say uh, familiar or let's say um, equipped to the problem, let's say uh, in a certain area, there is same or similar problem. So the basic research, let's say there is a student, a number of students uh, come up with the same or almost the same solution of problem. So the solution that come up with the students could be applicable or generalized to all. Applied research focuses on a specific context. So meaning to say, Specific. specific. So, what is, so the what is the problem? So, so, so need, need a specific, a specific answer, answer, not a generalized not answer. answer. Unlike basic like research, research, it would focus on, on various contexts. Context. So, so, since this is this more is on more theories, theories, so the research, so the research would, would rely on the theories of uh, uh, some uh, researchers some that was that done, done previously. previously. Applied research pays attention on external validity. So meaning to say, if we, if we are talking about external, that is outside. Pays attention to internal validity. So internal validity meaning to say, this is inside, so you are going to validate your research or the solutions to a particular area or let's say to a particular sample size. Next one, exploratory versus explanatory research. I'm pretty sure that all of you are familiar with this one. Exploratory research, uh, the main aim is to gain familiarity with the subject and achieve new insights. So the question is, why you are exploring something because you want to have new idea new concept that soon you would share to your classmates to the citizens or to your community number two the key variables aren't defined so we need to say variable this is the main point that you are going to use it to use for your research. Explanatory research, meaning to say the main aim is to formulate hypothesis and test it. So meaning to say um, your assumption would be testable so that your assumption would not be assumption anymore since you have since tested, you have tested meaning, meaning to say that, say that all your assumptions, your assumptions would be granted, would be granted and, and would come would up come with, up with let's, say, let's say, in reality. In reality. Number two, key, key variables, variables are defined. Are defined. So we need to say that the variables, the variables is, there. is there. So there so is a specific, there is specific uh, context, uh, context or, or let's say, let's say um, um, areas that you need to test in order your assumption not be an assumption anymore. Next, qualitative research versus quantitative research. Qualitative research, this is commonly called interpretative research or interpretive research. 
this is more on press um interpretation its method rely heavily on thick verbal descriptions of a particular context being studied so this is usually um, suggest for me as a research teacher i always I recommend this type of research method to my students since this is a very basic one. Quantitative research, you are going to use statistical details, but there are students are not inclined with a numbers, but they are good with interpretation of data. So we suggest and allow the students to use qualitative research type of method. So generally, so generally speaking, speaking qualitative, qualitative research, research is spend a great a deal of time, time in the setting, in the setting being, being studied for field work. work. Uh, as, far uh, as, as far as I know, know or as far as, as I remember, remember there, there is, is a strand that I allow them, them to them use, use or to do field work, work for their study. For their study. So they allow them to go to um, a certain pla place because their ensemble size require a fisherman. So since um, that is, they are going to do the field work outside the school. So they have to bring a letter to the uh, to that area, area where, where they, they would, would do the field work for their research. Next, rely on rely themselves on as the main as instrument of data collection. Exactly. So this is subjectivity and intersubjectivity. Of course, you are going to analyze data using interpretative lenses. So meaning to say it doesn't, it doesn't really matter um, if, um, you're, if you're, if you want if to you want use, use statistical data in order to interpret, interpret the results result of your research, uh, basically, uh, basically we are recommend our students. Let's say they want to use the qualitative research method, and they are going to do the statistical data. We suggest to use the averaging method in order to interpret the data analysis next one is the general characteristic of qualitative research number one data sources are real world situations exactly so meaning to say this is for a perfect example is the covid 19 pandemic Data are descriptive. This is more on description, as I've said a while ago, that qualitative research, it's more on interpretation. It's more on description. So the researcher would describe the result or the findings from the sample size. Next, emphasizes a holistic approach, processes, and outcomes. So we need to say that since this is a qualitative type of research method, all their, um, let's say, investigations or conduct, conducting um, or gathering data would be in the process. So that whatever the outcomes, it's not considered as biased, but it considered as reliable and valid. Next one, data analysis is inductive. So meaning to say, the data, since it is from the sample size, uh, let's say they would be conducting a research from outside. So since they have this, let's say, a letter from the, from the principal to do research outside so it would be a more realistic or more valid if they would do that in conducting the research 
Next, describe the meaning of research findings from the perspective of the research participants. So the researcher would describe the answer from the respondents outside or within the schools. But I'm pretty sure that some students are biased in interpreting the data based on the answers of the respondents. But we are not allowing that because the research would not be valid and reliable. Inductive reasoning meaning involves developing generalizations from a limited number of specific observations or experiences, highly dependent on the number and representativeness of the specific observation used to make the generalization. Let's say uh, a group, a certain group would want to conduct investigations because there is a problem in an area, for example, in Naga City. So what they usually do, they would come up with several uh, sets of questions in accordance with in accordance with the problems so that their issues or let's say problem would be finding a solution what are strengths advantage of qualitative one advantage of qualitative method is exploratory research is the use of open-ended questions and probing gives participants the opportunity to respond their own words so meaning to say not uh, conducting yes or no meaning to say that if you are experiencing this one so you are going to further explain their side so there are researchers usually do the close-ended question. But this is not, for me, I am not allowing this one because how could I find the feeling of the person or the experience of the person if I am going to use a close-ended question? So we are always remind our students, especially if they undergo the um, research, uh, research proposal. proposal. So, so with that, with that sets, sets of, of interrogations, interrogations, we're going, we're going to, to, or we are or particular, we particular with, with uh, the with answers the or with the questions that the, that the researcher, researcher would ask would to the respondents. respondents. Meaningful, Meaningful and culturally, and culturally sal salient, salient to the participant unanticipated by the researcher, rich, rich and explanatory in nature. So meaning to say that all the answers would be coming from the sample size that you have identified. So there is no bias. Open-ended questions have the ability to evoke responses. Another strength advantage of qualitative methods is that they allow the researcher the flexibility to probe initial participant responses. So that is to ask why or how. So we need to say from, from probing, you are getting a deeper explanation to their answers. Unlike close-ended questions, you would not find their feelings or their situations unless otherwise you are going to use a probing question. Next, exploratory advantage. The researcher can get an in-depth responses to make the study substantial. Exactly. The most very important in research is to know the um, answers, the experience. Let's say you are going to uh, use a research design that is a grounded theory. So I mean to say that 
you are going to experience or let's say ethnography so to know the feeling of that person in that institution you need to experience so that all the answers would see would be substantial weaknesses issues in qualitative research number one gaining entry so that is the reason why we always remind our researcher especially our students in senior high school that that as much as uh, as much as, let's say, we want them to publish their research because the next generation or the next students would, let's say, use it as an entry to do in-depth research about their existing research. We contacting potential research participants. Next, selecting Next, participants. Select participants. Much, better Much better if you, if you have, have this idea this what type of respondents you are going to ask for your research because it's hard for a researcher if he, he or she doesn't know what is their respondents. So it must, it must, it would be difficult for a researcher uh, to come up with a research. Um, as far as I know, uh, my research back in my master's, uh, my master's degree, um, since I already know my respondents or my sample size with regard to my research. It's not difficult for me to locate them because one way in order for you to easily finish your research is to identify what type of respondents you are going to ask. You already have the title, but who are your respondents and where this respondent uh, located? So I always remind the um, students, if you are going to identify a research proposal, you have to identify your participants, meaning your sample size, who are your participants for your research is, is the participant, the participant easily, easily to locate? To locate? Is, the is the participants always available? available? Or, or the participants, the participants are not, are not uh, always, uh, always available? available. So, so how, how would you how would finish your research? So the, so the, the research have, have this validity or time frame. frame. So in my end, when I am doing my research in masters, my professors allowed us to come up with a research and finish within six months. So within six months, you have to finish your research. Otherwise, it would not be valid. Next one, leaving the field. So meaning to say you are going to experience so that so you that would you be would connected, be connected with, with uh, the people that people you that want to get, to get more ideas, ideas or knowledge, or knowledge about, about their situations. situations. Next, one. Next, one. Next one, gaining, gaining entry. entry. Access is Access very, much, very much dependent upon, upon the, the, the researcher's personal, personal characteristics. characteristics. And how, and how others, others perceive, perceive the researcher. Research. Meaning to say, you are getting more information from your, let's say, research questions. So from the research question, the respondents would give you an answer. Then you're going to consolidate. Then as a researcher, you're going to interpret the data. Next one may require considerable negotiation and compromise with 
with a gatekeeper. Gatekeeper is the one that giving out the questions to the researcher, uh, to the respondents. Trust is earned, not given. This is very important because we have this confidentiality. So whatever the answers, whatever the, the result of the, the analysis or the result or their answers would be treated as confidential. So from there, you have to gain trust first to your respondent so that they would give you a suitable answer to your questions. Next one, contacting participants. This is this is sometimes very difficult to find out. As I've said a while ago, that if you are going to identify a respondent or a sample size to, of your research, you have to identify and you have to inform and aware that if your participants are have this easily access like for instance you are going to gather information i are there available um their time is always ready in order to conduct investigations or interrogations next dealing with gatekeeper Issues of building trust and ensuring confidentiality and anonymity. Sometimes there is or there are sample size that they are not allowing themselves to participate in your research. So this is a problem. So you have to gain trust first in order your sample size would allow them to answer your question because if your respondent, target respondents uh, are not available, your time frame to do the research would be extended. And remember that in research, some professors, some teachers, would allow you to finish your research within six months or one year. So how would you finish your research if your target respondents are not always available? Selecting participants is fraught with difficulties in identifying and selecting an appropriate number of participants who can provide useful information about the particular topic and setting being studied. So that's what I said a while ago, that in conducting your research, you always consider first who are your participants for your particular research. Because if they are not available and they are not giving you the trust how would you finish your research remember that we have a time frame to finish it the threats to validity in quality studies observer bias yes sometimes this is very biased one student um i'm sorry one student have this bias result because their respondents are their friends, are their neighbors. So, of course, their friends would have this bias answer. So, invalid information resulting from the perspective the researcher bring to the study and imposes upon it. Since it is biased, it is not considered as valid or reliable. So this is always um, avoidable of a researcher to be your research finding bias, especially in conducting your research to your 
sample size. Next one, leaving the field. So the question is when and how to exit. So the bonds form with study participant complicate leaving the setting, time constraints, when the amount of accessible data is sufficient. So I mean to say that in order for you to conduct a good research, you would have this uh, leaving the field. Meaning to say that you you are bringing the test of test questions that you are going to ask to your respondents, then the respondents would give this unbiased answer to your questions. Uh, so this is reliable and valid because you are not familiar and you are not related with your sample size. Or participants. Or participants. Next, Next. Types, of types of qualitative research. research. Qualitative, qualitative traditions of inquiry. of inquiry. We have, we have biography. biography. It, it pertains, pertains to life, to life history, 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 or oral history. history. Phenomenology, Phenomenology, that is the lived, lived experience. experience. Grounded, Grounded theory, theory, ethnography, ethnography and case and study. study. So what is biographical study? So this is the study of an individual and her or his experiences as told to the researcher or found in documents and archival material. Life history, the study of an individual's life and how it reflects cultural themes of the study. So biographical, we always suggest this to our Hume strand since they are more on inclined with history. And we always remind them and tell them that using biographical study as the research design for qualitative research, it would be easier for them to conduct a research because they are used to it and familiar. Example is student life of a Rizal, a documentary, the comparative analysis of 19th century scientists, common and contrast, and who is Lapu-Lapu, a closer look to a brave hero. Next one, phenomenology. Describe the meaning of the lived experience about a concept or a phenomenon for several individuals. Uh, this is the most exciting research design. Why? Because you are going to experience by doing an immersion. So meaning you are going to go to a certain place, then you are going to study their lives, not just study, but you have to live there. So what their, um, let's say, status in life, what do, what, what, let's say, what are their doings every day? So you have to experience it so that your, answers that you want to get from a certain problem that you have identified would have the solution and you have experience. Next, grounded theory. The intent of a grounded theory is to generate or discover a theory that relates to a particular situation. If little is known about a topic, grounded theory is especially yes, useful. Yes, yes. So let's say you want to conduct a research because you have this theory in your mind. So you are going to use the grounded theory, but some of my students seldom use this type of research design under qualitative research method. Sample titles using grounded theory in feminist research, a research about women's inclusion from administration position in primary education. 
So that is the delivery of quality nursing care, a grounded theory study of the nurse's perspective, grounded theory learning, and application of grounded theory in educational practice. So ethnography, as I've said, that a description and interpretation of a cultural or social group or system. So the researcher examines the group, observable, and learned patterns of behavior, customs, and ways of life. Involves prolonged observation of a group, typically through participant observation. So I mean, let's say you want to observe the life of an ITAS. So what you are going to do, you are going to go to the mountains and observe their way of life, customs and traditions. Then from there, you are going to interpret. Next, ethnography, field work, key informants, um, context important, need holistic view, and need grounding in anthropology. So meaning to say, you are going to experience. These are the sample titles that I was gathered from a researcher. And a case study last year, a case study is an exploration of a bounded system or a case or a multiple cases over time through a detailed in-depth data collection involving multiple sources of information rich in context. So the context of the case involves situating the case within its setting, which may be physical, social, historical, or economic. So sample titles for case study, cultural influences on the social network, marketing effectiveness. So a case study in Thailand, gender differences within Within, Within academia, academia, a case study, case study on the probability of promotion, of promotion and a case study on male study prostitution in Cebu City. So summarize the characteristic of types of qualitative research. This is case study, ethnography, phenomenology, grounded theory, and biography. So let us differentiate each other uh, first one the method ethnography it focuses on context or culture sample size there's no uh, data collection observation and interviews there's none because this is just um, one of my professors said that sample size it does not state there because it's up to you what sample size or how uh, how or what are the numbers of sample size you are going to observe maybe one maybe two maybe three it's up to you as a researcher biography this is more on documentary the sample size or the participants maybe one to two and the data collection is stories from individuals and documents. So meaning to say that you are going to gather information or gather uh, experiences from your uh, participants. Next one, phenomenological. The focus is people who have experienced a phenomenon. Let's say you want to study about uh, experience regarding COVID-19 pandemic. So you are going to identify at least five to 25 persons. So you are going to use interviews in order to collect data from their experiences. Grounded theory, uh, develop a theory from grounded in field data. So the sample size is 20 to 60. So you are going to do an interviews, open and Excel coding. So we have this in interpretation of data, you are going to use the, the, the coding in identifying and 
analyzing the answers of the respondents. Case study, organization, entity, individual, or event. That is the main focus of this research design. Sample size, same with ethnography. There is no exact number of how many participants you are going to identify because it's up to the researcher. The data collection method is interviews, documents, reports, and observation. So points of wonder, what is the application of qualitative research in life? So credit to practical research one, qualitative published by Helen Banks. You know, let us uh, further discuss what is practical research two. Practical research one is more on descriptive description. Quantitative is more on statistical analysis. The term research comes from the French word research, okay? which means to travel through or to survey. So from the Webster defines research it as the systematic patient study and investigation in some fields of knowledge undertaken to discover and to establish facts and principles. So meaning to say that you are going to gather information or certain facts uh, to formulate or let's say to answer the research questions that you want to find out. A more basic and all-inclusive definition of quantitative research is a systematic objective and comprehensive investigation of a certain phenomenon which involves accurate data, gathering, recording, and critical analyzing, and interpreting of all facts about phenomenon through numerical evaluation and statistical interpretation. So meaning to say quantitative, this is more on numbers, statistics. Next, systematic objective comprehensive. Actually, this is um, the nature of research or let's say this is the a diagram on how to conduct a research. First research, then you're going to investigate a certain phenomenon you have identified. So you are going to gather information, recording, analyzing, interpreting. Then from there, you are going to gather a data. The data that you have interpreted, the data that you have gathered from your sample size or identified participant would be the basis that would suffice your hypothesis. Generally, the purpose of research may be expressed in a capsule as, number one, to discover is to find truth about a subject which was not yet part of the stream of knowledge. So the reason why you are conducting research, especially quantitative, quantitative because you want to test the hypothesis. You want to get in-depth knowledge or information about the subject. Next, to verify is to find whether what was found to be true, let's say 50 years ago, is still true today. So there is a curiosity behind why you are conducting a research, why the Filipino still believing, even though it is um, 50 years old or 60 years old. So some researcher, out of curiosity, they come up with a research proposal because they want to test and let's say they want to um, conclude their assumptions. Next one, research functions. 
research discovers new facts or new truths about known phenomenon or primal existence. So the main reason why we are conducting a research because we want to find no discovery, no facts that we know would help the community, would help the society about a certain phenomenon. Number two, research correct perception as well as expands them. So meaning to say that through real research, your curiosity will give exact or legit or valid information so that your assumptions would not be assumption anymore. Number three, research gathers information on subjects or phenomenon with little knowledge or information. Exactly. The reason why people or researchers conducting research, research, research is because they want to get more knowledge or information. Number four, research expands or verifies existing knowledge. Some researcher, the reason why they are conducting research because they want to get more information, knowledge, or wisdom. And they found that there is insufficient uh, findings or solution or recommendations. And that's the reason why they are conducting research. Research finds answer to queries by means of scientific studies. So all the phenomenon, all the answers from the researcher was start from researching a certain phenomenon. So you would not be informed and knowledgeable about a certain phenomenon if no researcher uh, conduct this research. So this is characteristic of good research. If you are a researcher, you would you would find it clear if your research is good or not, because there are research that is not uh, good and. According to Colley D and Best, 2000, uh, good research, number one is systematic, controlled, empirical, analytical, objective, unbiased, and logical, and employs hypothesis. Employs qualitative or statistical methods, original work done by an expert, patient and unhurried activity, requires an effort or making capacity, and requires courage and intelligence. There are research that is um, done by a researcher. Usually, they do this within a week, and this is not a good research. A research we consider as a good research if it falls to these following characteristics according to Paul, Libby, and Best. So as a researcher, I would easily identify if the research of a certain student is good or not good from the research finding itself, from the data analysis or statistical analysis, from there, you would easily identify if the research have been hurried to create or to, to done. So what we usually do, um, we allow the students to, not to research, but to change the chapter four and five because what we are advised to our students since this is a foundation and since this is 
um, let's say, an opinor uh, for them to get aware when they are intending to college because as far as we know that you would not be graduated in college if you are not doing your research. So in senior high school in our department, since I am a research teacher, we always advise and we see to it that our students are fully aware and know how to create a good research so that when the research be presented to international conference, these uh, students and as their mentors are being proud to them. Next, so what is a, what are the good characteristics of a good research? Yeah, research oriented, efficient, scientific, effective, active, resourceful, creative, honest, economical, reliable. So that is the meaning of researcher. You as a researcher, we we are researcher. The reason why there are people afraid to conduct a research even though they have already identified a problem because it is time consuming uh, because one one characteristic of or a good characteristic of a research is unhurried so I mean to say that you have this uh, plan in research we have this timetable of, of, of how, how would you, you do, do your, your research, research within six within months, six within, months within, within within one year? One year. So, so this, this, this research, research or making a research, a research proposal or a research, or a research need more time, need more time and need and more uh, reading, reading of information, information from different, different researchers researcher. so that your so research, that your would, research be would be effective and efficient and, and honest and reliable. reliable. Qualities of a good uh, qualitative uh, researcher, researcher reasoning, reasoning power, power alert, alert, accurate, accurate intellectually, intellectually honest. honest. Um, um, all the participants, all the I believe, I believe that, that, that if you are a researcher, you, are a researcher, you, would, you would consider yourself, yourself if you are a good, good researcher, researcher, if you possess the qualities, the qualities of a good qualitative, a good qualitative researcher, researcher that I have uh, been shared, shared to you and enjoys and doing, doing research. research. Actually, Actually, doing research, doing research is, is, it might, it be, might difficult be difficult to your, to your end, end, but, but this, is this is very enjoyable, very enjoyable settings. Why? Why? Because, because you would get you more information from, from different, different researchers researcher. The reason why they find this difficult because from the start of your research, you have not identified who are your respondents and what area or specific, let's say, place you are going to do your research. That's why you are not enjoying yourself in conducting your research. And has, and has good working good knowledge, knowledge on statistical and grammar. and grammar. Actually, there is no problem no with regard with to regard knowledge, knowledge on statistics and grammar, grammar because, because online application, application is always, is always available. available. I, always I always tell my students, students that, that, that you always, always or they always or they check always their check grammar, grammar using, using the Grammarly, the grammarly applications, applications on the website. On so from there, from there the, application the application would application check, would check if, your if your grammar is correct, is correct. and always positive. always positive and don't be hurry because, because the more the you get hairy of your research, research the, more the more that, that your, research your research would not would be, be finished finish in a time in frame. A time frame. So the Philippine so the research, research trends, trends, we have short-term research, short -term research, long -term research, research long-term research, short-term short -term research. research. A, perfect a perfect example is, is a case study, a term paper, long-term long research, 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 
for example, a dissertation that is a long-term research and thesis. And ethical principle, this is sometimes forget by the researcher. We have the honesty, objectivity, confidentiality, respect of poor intellectual property, is and responsible uh, purpose people. So mean say whatever the information, whatever the answers from the respondents, you have to treat this as highly confidential, and you have to respect their answers. So whatever their answers, you have to respect because that is based on their experience not your experience. not your experience and the reason why you are gathering information it's because there is something you want to find out and there is something that you want to conclude and make a period so according to albert einstein everything that can be counted does not necessarily count everything that counts cannot necessarily counted so, so thank you so, thank much, you so much, much for my for your listening. So the most so the very important, very important as, a as a researcher. Person, 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 person. Um, uh, you, you mean to say you have the you confidence, have the confidence to, to finish your research, finish your research, research and, don't, and be don't be hurry and, and make this, make this as, enjoyable as enjoyable as possible. As possible. And, as and as a research, as a research teacher, 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 I'll always I'll tell, always the, tell my, my, my students, students um, to, um, to to enjoy, to enjoy more, more in, conducting in conducting the research, the research especially the research, research surveys, surveys, since they have already, they identified, they have already the identified the respondents. The respondents. So, so patience is a virtue because that because is that the, the time that, that they would they gather would information, information and, and without, without information, information that was gathered, gathered from, from the, the respondents, respondents mean to say, say you would not or you, or you cannot interpret your data. So respondents or sample size is very important to your research. In, in our um, doctorate, Degree, uh, our, professors our professors allow us allow to, us to do more research, more research um, in, accordance in accordance with, 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 the with the phenomenon, especially, especially in our major, in our major which major, is uh, business, management. business management. So we, so we need to come up with, come a, research with a research that is relevant, that is relevant and, and Necessary, necessary to, to the phenomenon, the phenomenon. Especially, especially the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. pandemic. So there are, so there are people, 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 actually, actually if, if I have time, I have time to do a research, do a research uh, one, perfect one perfect research, research proposal, proposal to study is, is the COVID-19 COVID pandemic. pandemic. Especially the, especially the experience, experience. so you are going, so you are to, going use to use ethnography, ethnography or, or phenomenology, a uh, research a design, design, either quali quantitative, quantitative or qualitative, or qualitative research, research method, method. method, or mix, or mix, mix, mix method. method. So in our, in our in our society, in our society, society um, there are so there are many, so many phenomenon, phenomenon that, that, that we can come up with, come a, research, up with a research, but some people, some people are afraid, are afraid or, or some researchers are afraid to do the research, research because, because this is time-consuming. Time consuming. 
and it takes more time it takes more effort in order to conduct investigations or gather information most especially if your target respondents or the sample size are always unavailable so the problem is it would be extended your uh, research until it would not be finished so what happened what would happen uh, of your research it would, it would go to, go to a nonsense. nonsense. So you have, so to, you have to make sure make that sure your that research, your research once, once you have, have can, can start, start conducting, conducting the investigation, the investigation from, your from your sample size, sample size or from, or from, your, from participants, your participants, make sure make that, sure that, that you, you would be finished, finished in, a in a time frame. Because we have, because this, we have this timetable time that we that usually used to in order for us to be aware and guided. So we do go to uh, immersion of the students. One a way, a way in order, in order for, for them, them to, to feel, feel that, that, that they conduct they conducted, conducted or let's say, or say they come up, come with, up with a good a research, good research, research is, through is through oral defense, defense. So, from there, so from there um our, um, students, our students allow them, allow them to, to do an oral, oral defense. defense there is there a two is sets two of, sets of, of Defense. One, one, one is the one research, research proposal. proposal. Number two Number is the final, is the defense. final defense. defense. So from there, so from there we are going to, to usually we invite, we invite researcher, researcher, expert from expert different, different fields. fields. Then the students, then the students would students defend their research, research title. title. The reason, the reason why, why we, we do this is because, because for them to feel that, that the research, the research would not be would useless, not be useless. Meaning, meaning to say, say they feel that their effort, let's say, satisfy themselves. Because that is because the that fulfilling is the moment, moment, moment if you, if you would, stand would stand to your, your panelist, then, then you're going to defend your research, research. then the, then uh, the panelist, uh, panelist is very, is very let's, say, let's say happy, happy, happy regarding the regarding outcome the of your defense, defense and the panelists panelist would, panelist would give you more, give you more information, information or wisdom, wisdom and, then and then they, they will, will suggest, suggest more, ideas more ideas in order to in improve order your to research. research because the reason why the, why the, uh, the panelist uh, is, is there is to scrutinize and Suggest, suggest more, more for, the, for the for your research, for your research to be research more, to be more effective, effective and informative, and informative because, because your research, your research would, be would be a solution, a solution to, the to the phenomenon that, phenomenon that, that you, you have identified. Have identified. Dear participants, maybe our speaker is in internet problem connection. Let's we proceed to our quiz competition after the short video clips. We come back to our speaker again.
here participants to participate our quiz competition you have to go to slider.com and the quiz code is igp quiz igp quiz you can scan the qr code from the screen also to participate this quiz competition or you have to go to slider.com and the code is igp quiz after quiz competition we come back to our speaker again with our question and answer session maybe our speaker facing some internet connection problem already 21 participant join with us we have started our quiz competition in a short time so participates in quiz competition you have go to slido.com and the quiz code is igp quiz Let's start the quiz competition now. Our first question: Participants' observation demands in, in demands an immersion in the foreign setting of the research participants. Is it true or false? only 40% of our participants give the right answer and the answer is false. On the leaderboard, Diona Till C. Kelly is leading the first position. Our next question is, this research is designed to solve practical problems of the modern world rather than to acquire knowledge. Is it applied research or basic research? It is three percent of our participants give the right answer and the answer is basic applied research. On the leaderboard, Dionatel C. Kelly is leading the first position and the following Evelyn P. O. Ferry and the third position is Mary De Bayeta. Our next question is, which of the following might be an immersion experience? Is it lighting to instrumental music or playing a game? Seventy percent, seventy-five percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is playing a game. On the leaderboard now, Evelyn Pioferi leading the first position. Our next question is: What is phenomenological research? Is it research focus on life experience of specific share events or identities or research that examines a case within a certain place and amount of time? 71% of our participants give the right answer and the answer is research focus on life experience of specific share events or identities. On the leaderboard again Evelyn P. Ophiri leading the first position our next question qualitative research suggest, suggest all but which of the following truth can be found or research should be an inductive process T 
50 percent of our participants give the right answer and the answer is truth can be found on the later board now mary be leading the first position our next question is which is not associated with qualitative research is it who or how many Eighty percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is how many? Our next question is: Qualitative research sampling is mostly purposeful and non-random, or purposeful and random? Sixty-three percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is purposeful and non-random. On the leaderboard, again, maybe we lead in the first position. Our next question is: Which is not a major characteristic of research? Is it objective or open-minded? Seventy-six percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is open-minded. On the leaderboard now, Frances may be Dijon leading the first position. Our second last question: Some think of quantitative research as complex because of its use of hypothesis or numerical data. Seventy-two percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is numerical data. On the leader board now, Mary Dill Payita leading the first position. Our last and final question is: This approach seeks solution to local practical problem. Is it action research or case study? Eighty-eight percent of our participants give the right answer, and the answer is action research. Congratulations of of our top ten quiz competition winners. Thank you all for participating our quiz competition. Let's we proceed to our question and answer session with our speakers.
right, sir. Welcome. Welcome. I'm sorry for because I was disconnected because of it's okay, sir. internet connectivity. Thank you, sir, for providing my time. Sir, are you ready to answer the question? Yeah, but if you give the question, then you can send your question. After question and answer session, we move to our certification process. So if participants are requested to ask their question in the comment box. Dear participants, we are still waiting for our question. Sir, our first question from Nilo Mar Marcado is what instance where qualitative and quantitative research are being used together? Okay, that's a good question, um, ma'am Nilo Mar Marcado. Um, if, let's say, if the phenomenon is related or um, there is a relationship between statistical data and statistical analysis and descriptive analysis so that's the reason that's time that we are going to use the mixed method which is quantity and qualitative method but this is very seldom in a context of for example in a context of academe um, based on my experience uh, when i propose a research uh, title to my professors back then in my in my master's degree uh one of my one of my because the the professor suggested and told us that we need to conduct a research that composed of quantitative qualitative and mixed method so that the professors are aware if we know how to use the uh the three types of research uh, methods so it depends on the phenomenon phenomenon that you are going to study let's say you are going to use the 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 two types of research method so that's time that you are going to use the quality and quantitative for example it is related or it is um it pertains to correlations with the use of description so that's the time that you are going to use the mixed method but if it is more on statistical and numerical analysis so that's the time that you are going to use the quantitative research method but if you are going to to describe something to interpret something you are going to use the qualitative method but this is very seldom um, that 
some researcher use the mix method, which is the quantity and quality, because it is very difficult, not very difficult, sometimes difficult to, to find out or study. But to make your side very easy, so you have to um, identify or choose if your research would be focused on quality or quantitative type of research. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. Our next question from Evelyn Oferi. Good afternoon, sir. Is qualitative research can be an output in practical research too? And thank you. Um, I'm sorry, sir. Can you repeat that one? From active research can be an output in practical. Yes. Um, qualitative research can be an output in practical research too. No, because practical research too is more on quantitative research. Qualitative research is practical research one. And the reason why uh, we are giving this type of research method to our students for in particular is because for them to have an option of what research method they are going to use. And we focus on, and we focus on um, first to qualitative, second to quantitative, then immersion. Immersion meaning to say the students have an option what type of research method they are going to do, either mixed method, quantity, and quality. Uh, from Mom Evelyn, is qualitative research can be an output in particular research too? No. Because practical research too is quantitative research. Practical research one is um, qualitative research. Thank you, sir. Our next question from Marivin. Hello, I would like to end. Oh, it's not a question. Sorry. Sir, our next question from Carol. Sir, question is, how can we assume that the topic that we are about to conduct will give an impactful result and will be beneficial in the future? Okay, that's a good question, Ms. Carol. Uh, from the start of your research proposal, see to it that the research that you are going to conduct is related to the phenomenon. Let's say your research that you want to conduct, it's more on experience of the people regarding COVID-19 pandemic. So it is not impactful to the person you are conducting, let's say, um, the most affect, uh, affected um, respondents or people of the COVID-19 pandemic is everyone. So we have to identify which one is your target respondents. It would be impactful to everyone, let's say, um, to the students. The, the the okay uh, with regard to your question miss um mom carol get back to you um it is impactful if you would share 
the results of your research. For example, you have identified a certain phenomenon, um, let's say uh, the COVID-19 pandemic experience of senior high school students, it would be impactful and beneficial if, if you would share your recommendation to your students. This is not be beneficial on the part of the senior high school student if you would not share your recommendations. So it is very important as a researcher to make sure after you have conducted your research and, all, and completed your research, it would be beneficial and useful if you would share your recommendation to your community. And that's the reason why our professors um, suggested that if we finish our dissertation, we make sure that our research recommendations would be shared to our community, especially to our target respondents, so that it would be useful and commendable on their part. And whatever the problems or phenomenon that was identified that is related or let's say the target, uh, target respondents have this responsibility, at least they know this is the solution to their identified phenomenon or problems or issues. So it would be beneficial if you would share the recommendations to everyone, but if you would not uh, shared, this is useless. So what is the what is the um, sense of being conduct conducting a research if you would not share your outputs or recommendations to your community or society? Thank you, Sarah. Our next question from NJ. Where can we limit our research population? And the second question is, we are studying the student in our town. I am a SSS student. Can we limit only to one state or two states only? Yes, it could. Uh, your first answer, where can we limit our research population? Yes, it's up to you. Uh, but make sure that your, your limit of your population, you will state this to um to limitations scope and limitations of your study let's say uh you, your target uh, respondents is your community especially your streets and your or the number of your sample size is 20 you can do it's up to you because you are the one who conducting the research and you are the one you who are looking for the answers to your phenomenon that you want to find and answers um yes senior high school student can we limit only to a one state or yes you can you can um I've, as i've said a while ago that it's more important that you already uh, know who is your target um tar target sample size what area you are going to investigate or conduct a research so that it would be easily for you to come up or get more information. Um, a research, sometimes it, it prolongs the agony of the researcher. It's because of the wrong identification of the location, especially the sample size. Make sure that you have identified properly the locations and the sample size that you want to study because this is the problem of some researcher that the sample size is difficult to find out the problem is is the sample size always available or the target the target participants is always available if none you're going to shift to another area or location which would give you uh, more information or more time from the respondents because what what if the if the respondents is not available how would you gather data from the respondents okay we always tell our uh, senior high school um, students um, 
that they need they have to identify a specific location a specific um let's say uh target or sample size that's why you are very particular in chapter one two and three which is the research proposal Thank you, sir. Our next question from Nilamar Mercado. Is the use of table or the graphs for presentation of data exclusively used only for quantitative research? No. No. Um, you can use tables and graph even though it is qualitative, qualitative uh, research method, but it would uh, differ them regarding the interpretation of data okay um based on my experience i my forte is qualitative research so during my master's i i used tables and graph but i interpret it using description but unlike quantitative research uh, you are going to use tables and graphs and you are going to use a statistical and numerical analysis for you to identify and interpret the data. Unlike in qualitative, you are not going to use numerical, but you are going to use uh, data interpretation. But the basis is the table and graphs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the two uh, quali quantitative and qualitative research method uh, they both or they can use tables and graph but it differs to the interpretation of data okay take note that the two research method even the mixed method they can use the table and graphs but it differs to the data interpretation Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation and your wonderful question and answer. Thank you very much, sir. You're most welcome. Dear participants, today our topic name is Practical Research and Immersion. And today code is IGP nine four eight four. The code is IGP nine four eight four. The topic name is practical research and immersion, and the code is IGP nine four eight four. Without code, no one is eligible for certificate. To download your certificate, you have to go to our website. Our website name is eduigp.com. And the code is IGP9484. Thank you very much for participating this webinar and make this webinar wonderful. Thank you very much.